Dear brothers and sisters, the Islamic daily routine I'm about to share with you is life-changing. Imagine starting your day in a way that's not just about checking off tasks, but filling your hours with real, tangible blessings. This routine is designed to remove mental fog, allowing you to get more out of your day while experiencing more Baraka, blessings from Allah. This morning routine has the potential to transform both your mind and body, inshallah. It will make you more aware of Allah's presence in your moments and throughout your day. It's about more than just being a productivity machine. It's about operating at peak performance in your mental, emotional, and spiritual life. But I have to warn you, this routine only works if you have the bravery and courage to commit to it fully and to be present while doing it. Do not skip any steps and do not be weak. Number one, perform your morning prayers, Fajr. The only way to get ahead of everyone else is to start your day the right way, and that means waking up early for Fajr. It is the first victory of the day. Have a firm and resolute intention to wake up every day for Fajr, as it is a major sin to sleep through it. Build your sense of purpose by waking up early, facing the day, and bringing yourself closer to Allah. Don't be like those who are attached to their warm, comfortable beds and are afraid to wake up early. Even athletes who lift heavy weights may find themselves too weak to lift a blanket off themselves in the morning. This is the wrong mentality. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Roughen and toughen yourselves, as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, advised. Let's not forget about the night prayer. Tahajud. Though not obligatory, tahajud holds significant weight in Islam. This is the time when you seek closeness to Allah during the last third of the night, a moment when the world is silent and your heart can speak more clearly. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, encouraged this practice, as mentioned in the Hadith. The best prayer after the obligatory prayers is the night prayer, Muslim. Subhanallah, think of the last third of the night as a time when Allah opens his palace for you. Allah himself said that anyone who prays during this hour will have their dua, supplication, directly received by him and it will be answered. Imagine if a Muslim ruler opened his palace for you early in the morning and said, come by any time after 2 hours a.m. before Fajr, and I will give you anything you want from my kingdom. Wouldn't you go? You'd be crazy not to, but Allah opens his palace for you every morning, and yet many of us don't wake up early to go. Brothers, wake up early for Fajr. Don't miss out on all the blessings and rewards that are waiting for you from Allah. Number two, fasting. In this sense, fasting doesn't just mean the obligatory fasting during Ramadan. We also refer to delaying your eating in the morning. Have you ever noticed that when your stomach is full, you end up feeling lazy and tired? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that the worst container any man can fill is his stomach. While on feast days the Prophet might fill his stomach, it was rare and the exception rather than the rule. Most of the time the Prophet, peace be upon him, would have only two meals a day, with one of them being a small meal of dates and water. Learning to use your hunger and leveraging it to your advantage will teach you discipline, self-control, and will help you forge a strong mindset to achieve your goals. Now don't misunderstand me. Different people have different priorities. For instance, if your goal is to gain weight and muscle, and you're a competitive athlete, then fasting in the morning may not be optimal for you. But if you want mental clarity and to forge a resilient mind, and if you're not a competitive muscle-building athlete, then fasting until you deserve to eat is something I would advise. Earn your meal instead of having a full meal as soon as you wake up. Drink two to four glasses of water and use that hunger to work on specific tasks and goals. Some people might have a glass of tea or coffee, or both. At least get some important work done before you eat. For example, you could complete a deep work session, focus on your studies or even exercise, all in the morning before you eat. Why? Because eating can make you slow and sluggish, while hunger keeps you sharp and ambitious. The majority of high achievers would rather be hungry, alert, and attentive than fed, satiated, and potentially sluggish. Number three read or listen to the Quran. Starting off your day with the words of the Quran is like starting a trip on the most beautiful scenic route to reach your destination. Whether it's a single verse or an entire chapter, each word of the Quran holds deep and powerful meanings for your soul. 
When it comes to interacting with the Quran, many Muslims think they need to be fluent in Arabic or become scholars to apply the teachings in the Quran. This is incorrect. You do not have to be a scholar or recite long chapters. Even reading or listening to a few verses in the quiet of the morning can deeply enhance your understanding and increase your iman, faith. Additionally, seeking knowledge from the tafsir, exegesis, is a valuable way to truly understand the Quran as the Sahaba, companions of the Prophet, understood it. The Quran is not like other scriptures. As Muslims, we cannot make our own interpretations. These meanings have been understood by the Sahaba and handed down over generations. It is up to us to find out and understand what they mean. Look into tafsir and understand your Quran to get the most benefit out of it and do not follow the way of misguidance by trying to make up your own meanings and interpretations. Number four, seek knowledge. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim. Ibn Majah. This isn't just about religious knowledge. It's widely believed and understood by people of knowledge that the Prophet was primarily referring to religious knowledge. All the Islamic sciences are interconnected and beautifully interlinked with one another. Study any one of them, but first and foremost begin with Akita, Islamic creed, and Fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence, as these are the pillars of Islam. Without these, you will be lost. Remember, it's important to learn things that are good and helpful. This also includes knowledge of the dunya, worldly affairs. You should not only lose yourself in books, but also bring yourself closer to the people around you, become a better person, and draw nearer to Allah. Planting these seeds of knowledge in your mind is like planting beautiful flowers and fruitful trees in your garden. Number five, physical exercise. Did you know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the strong believer is more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. He encouraged us to be strong and active, to wrestle, ride horses, know how to fight, use archery, run, and swim. He showed us that being physically fit helps us in many ways. This doesn't necessarily mean you have to enter a competition, lift heavy weights, or run a marathon. It's about doing simple things that can make a difference, especially when you're starting out. Think of your body as a vehicle, like a car that you drive every day. For the car to run smoothly and take you places, you need to take good care of it, right? Well, the same goes for your body. Taking care of it and keeping your blood flowing is not just good for you. It's part of what Islam teaches us. Know this, taking care of your body is not just about looking good or being fit. It's about being capable and ready to protect yourself, your family, and your loved ones if an emergency arises. Are you ready to answer the call? It's about respecting the amana, trust, that Allah has given you. Whether it's stretching, walking, calisthenics, weightlifting, high-intensity interval training, or any other exercise, find what you enjoy and make it a part of your morning routine. Then add on to it, little by little, increasing your fitness while decreasing your laziness and weakness. Number six, eat a nutritious meal. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us to eat in moderation and to choose foods that are good for us in halal. You need to fuel your body and mind with a nutritious meal once you break your fasting. Previously, we compared the human body to a vehicle where physical exercise is a way to take care of your body just as a vehicle needs maintenance to run smoothly. Now with this example in mind, let's talk about the first meal of the day, which is like the fuel you put in the car. If the fuel is good, the car runs smoothly, does it not? In the same way, our body and mind are directly linked. Eat something high in protein with healthy fats and carbohydrates, and you will have high energy levels and good focus. This kind of meal is balanced and gives you a mix of everything your body needs. Choose foods that are nourishing and wholesome. It's not just about respecting your body and giving it the best start. You also follow the Sunnah, and that will nourish your mind and spirit, inshallah. So tomorrow morning, think about what you're eating and make a choice that's good for both your body and your mind. Self-reflection. If you want this message to reach more Muslim men, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Write Brave Dini Islam at the end to let me know you made it this far. May Allah reward you for your efforts, brother. Until next time, stay brave and steadfast.